America's national parks. You've heard of the popular ones, Yellowstone, the Grand Canyon, even Maine's Acadia ranks sixth on the list of most visited national parks. But this show isn't about popularity, we're about the fresh, the new, the underground stuff the hipsters are listening to. The up and coming kid on the National Park Service scene is this patch of trees right here, the Katahdin Woods and Waters National Monument. It's 87,500 acres of former timberland donated to the federal government by Roxanne Quimby, who helped found Burt's Bees. 2017 was the monument's first summer season. We went to check it out. Look at us, we're camping. I'm Dustin, that's Rachel, she's Julia. We occasionally clueless 20 somethings who work at a TV station. We are a reporter, producer, and photographer who got the chance to explore Maine, meet the people succeeding, the people struggling, and find out just what is there to do and see in a state almost as quirky as we are. In other words, we saw Maine by the mile. Created in 2016 by President Obama, the Katahdin Woods and Waters National Monument is one of the newest in the United States. The decision created a huge uproar in a region known for producing pulp and paper products. Locals thought land like this was already special the way it was and were worried about regulations on logging hurting the regional economy. Now before we go on, it's important I tell you up front, this won't be the all-inclusive tour of the monument I envision. Why? Because of this. We got lost and got a flat. There's no cell service over here, and now we gotta walk back this way to see if we can call somebody as quick as we can, and hopefully the car doesn't get stuck down there. If you learn nothing else from this show about anything, it's that 10-ply tires are the way to go if you're going to be driving on logging roads in Maine. More on that later. Right now, let's get acquainted with the geography, shall we? The first stop of our 24-hour Katahdin region tour was here, this donated home, which is actually Katahdin Woods and Waters HQ. To get there, you drive to Patton, Maine, about three hours from Portland and a little less than 90 minutes from Bangor. This is the domain of Park Superintendent Tim Hudson, who has just a few credentials that make him perfect for the job. When did you start getting this awesome mustache and why? Well, I don't remember why. I thought it was a good idea. I was uh, probably about 24. Um, and I shaved it off once and my wife said I looked younger than she did and grew it back again and that's the story. Should we move the poo-poo screen? Tim and his summer co-worker, Lynn Sanderson, are responsible for crafting an Acadia alternative out of some gravel roads and greenery. Right now, Katahdin Woods and Waters is a lot of trees, some old logging roads, and beautiful waterways with only a few ways to get to them. Tim and Lynn want to change that. We don't have any preconceived notions as to what the end product should look like. It's a, a wet glob of clay that we're you know, looking to, to mold into to something and, and what that end product looks like, who knows right now. 25 minute ride from the park office was the Upper East Branch campsite, our accommodations. It has all the creature comforts a creature, native to Maine's woods would expect, like bugs. But it also has a premium riverfront view, picnic tables with a fire pit, and a luxurious pit toilet. That said, sacrificing electrical outlets and cell service gets you in the middle of moose country and you won't pay a dime. Camping in the monument was free. No reservations, no fees, just grab your state fishing and fire permits, bring your canoe and hiking boots, and start scoping out a spot to look for moose. If you want to wake up and go find a moose. <laughs> oh, let me get my little crystal ball here and see where that might happen. The good news is, is yes, you can see a moose in the monument. What are your chances of seeing a moose in the monument? It depends upon the day. I've definitely seen moose along the loop road, but I've seen them, you know, at what I would consider odd times of the day. Middle of the morning, standing on the loop road. Middle of the afternoon, standing on the loop road. Two different areas of They're the loop road. They're on their road. own timetables. They're on their own timetables. We didn't see a moose, even though we stayed up waiting almost all night. Julia, however, did make friends with a dead bug. <gasps> Oh my God, oh what my is God. that? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that one is? It's, it's this black one here. I can okay. see how to open it, but I'm trying to figure out. I just now, before it out. I can explain more about the flat tire and what we did or didn't see in the monument, we have to talk about what the land was used for before it was donated to the Park Service. This tens of thousands of acres of forest provided timber for big paper mills in nearby towns like Millinocket and East Millinocket. 
Today, the mills are closed. The good paying jobs with benefits that were there are gone. A few new forest products businesses are expected to start up in the area, but high unemployment and strings of broken promises by other businesses have left many people in the Katahdin region hurting, hopeless and skeptical of the monument. She wanted to protect the forest, which is good. She has a good idea there. But for us to put it into a national monument, there's nothing to monumentize unless you're dedicating it to the paper industry up here. This is Wendy Wood. She lost her job with an area school system after the paper machine stopped in East Millinocket. Years later, she still hasn't found a job as good as the one she had. Do you like living here? When I was working, yes. What does this building mean to you? I mean, you, you walk by it still this every day. Building, I grew up here. I, I, used, I rode the trains in the train yard, went into the shipping department, and I worked human resource department for a work-study program in high school. I had family, friends, all work there. Desperation has divided towns between people like Wendy and people who think the monument will bring tourists and jobs in. What do I think about it? I, as far as I'm concerned, it's fine. I live right on US 1, I mean uh, Route 11. I'm right next to the entrance. There's always somebody that's going to complain, but I don't see any problems. People who understand people like me and people who have been in the same boat as I have. Other than that, if they've had a cushy job, they don't understand it. They don't. If they got a $15 plus an hour paying job, they don't understand it. Because they've never hit rock bottom. They don't know what it's like to fall in the Perhaps there is a lack of single large employers in the Katahdin region, but that doesn't mean folks are sitting idly around. There are all kinds of things to do even beyond Maine's Baxter State Park, even in places you wouldn't expect to find anything. And some folks are capitalizing on these activities, even in places perfect. like the bustling metropolis of unorganized territory T6R8. Not a Star Wars robot, it's a real place. Excellent. This is the foxhole cabin. This is where Joe Christensen and his family run the Madagamon Wilderness Campground and Cabins. As the name suggests, there are cabins and campsites. Joe's the kind of guy you want to know. If you've ever wanted to go canoeing with an expert, go fishing out on a remote lake, or hunt bears. Bears are very spooky, and everything has to be perfect. You know, that, you know or they're not going to come into that bait. Joe's family lives off the grid, making their own electricity and really, really good pancakes. And, and best of all, breakfast was only 15 minutes from our campsite. It's just a neat, neat place to be because every, everybody wants, is on vacation. You know what I mean? So everybody wants to go do something. There's plenty of hiking trails. And we do a lot of fishing. You know, uh, we're doing fly fishing class here today. The old-fashioned camp. You know, cell phones don't work here. They get here and, and you can just unplug and cook s'mores by the fire. Joe sees the National Monument as an opportunity to introduce people to the Katahdin region and is already seeing a slight uptick in business. How can you complain about more people stopping in your store to ask for directions? Either way you look at it, she already gave it to them. Complain all you want. The government ain't going to give it back. <laughs> no matter where you stand on the monument matter, free camping with great views might be enough to entice you to make a trip to Patton and Millinocket. As I explained at the beginning, we got lost and got the flat before we could get to what we were told are the best parts of Katahdin Winds and Waters. We'll leave it to you to tell us what the rest of the monument looks like. In the meantime, you can check out the sunrises and lighthouses you can stay overnight at, the types of things you'll find when you see Maine by the mile.